If you were to pick okay. one word that would describe the vehicle when you see it, what would you hope that would be? I'd probably say mean. Wow. That looks so hot. It looks fast right he now. He's going to be so it's happy with this. Manuel, your car's not missing. It's being overhauled. Hang on tight. You're about to see Tony's car come to life at one very high rate of speed. As he finishes this final design, it seems there's a couple things that Chip wants Tony to know. All right, Antonio, we've got your Pontiac. You have a nice little ride here. For our insider Gretchen, the fun starts now as she sees that her clues made a direct connection between Chip and Jamie. Once again, Boos has tapped directly into the mind of a mark that isn't even here, turning out a sketch that is squarely on target. Jamie on wheels. Gretchen says it's Jamie on wheels, and right now, she's going to have a message for Jamie on TV. All right, Gretchen, anything you want to say to Jamie after you see this? You are going to love this. I know you didn't know what color to paint it, but this is going to be perfect. to love it. Well, I did three loose sketches to show you several oh, colors. Wow. All of them are beautiful. I would think, in order of preference, she'd probably like that. It'd be a warm pearl gray with a cream top, Perfect. cream leather, and salmon leather inside. That would be gorgeous. Absolutely that's, that's gorgeous. That's our direction then. Oh, this is going to be beautiful. This gonna is be really going to be beautiful. All right, Marilyn, I know you think it's gone, but we've got it, and this is what we're doing to it. Draw away, my fellow co-host, and while you do, there's one question I want to ask that other car designer who's running around here. How did you prepare? I prepared for designing this 67 Coronet in two ways. One, by going back through all of my old Mopar memorabilia that I have. The second way I did was just mentally, uh, trying to think of all the cool Mopars in the past that I've seen in person, what I really liked. And I came up with this paint scheme based on the picture of a 67 GTX that I think really was the first time I fell in love with Mopar. That must have been one powerful sight, because he's still in love with Mopars to this very day. I really understand the importance of having a blueprint which the rendering provides. It's kind of tough to just see it in your head and then try to build it. And Chip goes beyond rendering. Taking the reins from Chip, design-wise, has been daunting. It's a lot of responsibility. Every decision is on my shoulders on this build, and I uh, really want to do Chip proud, and I definitely want to build Jeff's dream car. And he is. Well, there you go, Jeff. There's your coronet. Chris, nice drawing. Oh, I'm not supposed to say that, am I? So after a warm-up and a quick art lesson, it's time for AJ's rough sketch. Uh, eBay. <laughs> okay, so I'm ready to draw. Well, she's ready to make three guides that will present a trio of color schemes to Michelle and Ron. Once the lines are established, it's time for a little lesson in use of markers, with quick, loose strokes offering the best results when you're putting together a rough sketch. The mint green is an option, along with a couple variations involving red themes. Once the key colors are on, Chip shows AJ how to apply some highlights, making the cars look as though they've just had a shine. And now, it's time to sign. AJ's got her rough sketches here, so you can wow. take a look, see what you think. Right, nice. Whoa. 
Well, I like this one because it kind of reminds me of the car, I mean, the original car, but I don't want to say. I don't about you, know. Grandpa? Which I one? like the, the mint green the best. Yeah. Megan, I hope you're with us on the mint because I do too, are. babe. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be our guide to the build. It'll have AJ's styling cues, and it'll be a stunner. It's a high wire act as Chip guides another designer, keeping our build Foo certified as he helps deliver everything AJ sees in the car. Yeah, it's AJ's ride with an assist from the steady hand of this week's co-host. I love it. I'm in love with this car, so I hope you are really, really in love with this car. This is going to be amazing. As amazing as this next prank phone call. Let's sit back and watch the magic. We're not going to be mean to you all week. We're going to give you this at the end. So as the final touches go on, Chip Foose has some wise advice for our overhaul in market. Well, Melissa, if you learn anything this week, I hope you learn how to park without getting so many parking tickets. Carl, give a listen to this guy. All right, Carl, I hear you're real upset. We're about to make you happy. I'd say real happy. Chip Foose is back at his shop, busy crafting the design for Matt's Mustang. When I start to draw the car, what, what I've got to figure is what's the best angle that's going to show the design of the vehicle. Now, the drawing is simply just a tool so that we can build the car. And you know, I'll, I'll do one line drawing and then I'll overlay it and overlay it and overlay it until it's exactly what I want. You know, the most important part of a drawing is the line drawing itself. Um, if the line drawing's bad, then the drawing's going to look bad. And that's all I want this to do, is I want all the builders to be able to look at this, glance at it, and they know what their job is. I've got the line drawing, pretty much exactly what I want. Now I can start blocking in some color, and usually I'll start with a light blue, because that's a reflective color that, if the vehicle was sitting outside, the sky tone, that light blue, is gonna reflect into the top surfaces. Your eye is looking at this surface, but it's reflecting what's over here. I'm not really rendering, I'm just kind of cleaning things up and smoothing it out. It's all the little tiny detail lines that'll really make the rendering work. You know, it's just softening everything up a little bit. Well, Matt, I know you know we have your coupe, but you have no idea what it's gonna look like.
Chip, the master designer, is hard at work putting the pieces together on paper, starting with the trunk. What I'm doing right now is giving a quick sketch to Derek at Certified Sound. On the trunk, what we're gonna do is expose the tank from the air ride technology system, and then that back panel is gonna be on such an angle that it can pop through, the tank can pop through, and then we'll put the two amps on there. We're gonna put a 10-inch woofer on both sides, and then it's far enough back that through the package tray underneath the back window, that sound can come from the trunk into the interior, and we're gonna put a flat floor in it. We'll be able to lift up this panel to get to any car care details. On Harrison 63 Nova, when we pick the colors of the leather, then we pick the three different body colors that we might want to use on the car. On the bottom sketch, we've gone with this dark blue on the top of the hood, top of the deck lid, around the windows, keeping the silver top and the medium blue on the body side. Now, it's just decision time. When I start to draw the car, what, what I've got to figure is what's the best angle that's going to show the design of the vehicle. Now the drawing is simply just a tool so that we can build the car. And one of the tools that we need is this separate little sketch here. And what this tool is going to do is show that there's another color break here. On this sketch, you're just going to see the dark blue coming around the back. But I wanted to indicate that I want to bring that same silver that's on the roof back into this panel. So I'll do that on the sketch and get over to Mitch's with no color we're putting where. And it's all just indication. You know, I'm not really worrying about making it perfect. It's just throwing it down where I know it's going to be and just blocking it in. The Michelangelo's at Lanzini's are going to copy Chip's renderings down to the last detail. Harrison's car will have a three-tone finish with a silver top, Harrison's favorite color dark blue on the front and rear, and a lighter blue on the side panels to give the car length and sleekness. To finish it off, some thin black stripes to separate the colors and make it go faster. Put some little lines on it and we're gonna color this one done. This is one door slammer times two. One of the things I'm doing on Jim's rendering is I'm working on a vellum. And when I work on vellum, I can work on both sides. And what that's going to allow me to do is a pretty cool little technique with a just a regular Xerox. I'm going to spray glue that on the back of the drawing when it's all finished. It'll just kind of look like Jim's 56 is parked right there in front of Yosemite. And what I'm doing right now is tracing the outline of the car. I'll set this right over top of the drawing itself and cut it out. When Chris and I met Jim at his door, he actually mentioned a quote from George Burns. He said, if I were only 18 again, Chip is the master of small details. He cares about every little part that goes into his designs. Back in his office, Chip comes up with a plan for Fred's VW. When we did the initial prank with Fred, he said that he had always wanted a red and white bus, but he had only had blue and white buses. So my goal is to give him his dream. And I don't want to do a real bright red. I want to do something that's uh, very subdued because what we're looking for is that classic Volkswagen look. Volkswagen didn't put bright reds on their buses in this day. So uh, it's going to be a very subdued, kind of a darker maroon, almost into the brown family on the red.
Well, Fred, we're cooking up a bus for you. We're gonna add a couple extra windows, and give you that vintage look.